Christmas. You may be seated. Oh, wonderful. Today we celebrate that Christ, our Savior, is born. The King of creation has come. And so after weeks of anticipation, lighting a candle, just in a, waiting for the light to come, finally, the light has come. Christ is born. And so we light the Christ candle. This better not be electronic. <laughs> the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those walking in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Let's continue our worship as we uh, continue to sing. I invite the children to come on down. Uh, we need your help to, uh, to celebrate, and so there are uh, bells uh, over here, and uh, we're encouraging you to take one of those uh, string of bells and uh, just carry on uh, celebrating. So we're gonna sing.
Two, 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 two thousand years ago was born to us a baby boy. The son of God came here to earth to bring us so much joy. Humbled himself to live here with us in the form of man. To save us from ourselves a part of God's redemptive plan. Hung out with Adam's focus friends were normal fishermen. He spoke in riddles with them, now we must be born again. He lived for us until he died and nailed to a tree. And then he rose again to give us life abundantly. So who are you gonna tell? Tell somebody. Who are you gonna tell?
Wow, that invites a response. Turn to someone and say, Jesus is my savior. Yeah, Christ is born. Merry Christmas. Yes. Well, we have another opportunity to respond as well with our gifts. Gifts given in thanks for Christ is born. And uh, today the offering is designated for World Renew. It's an organization of the Christian Reformed Church that uh, brings renewal and restoration and hope into uh, broken parts of our world and uh, in uh, many different countries. And so we invite you to give uh, for that. And you'll have an opportunity during this next song uh, to bring your offering to the front uh, in the collection boxes and uh, as well as uh, you can give electronically uh, in the ways on the screen. And uh, we are welcoming these special guests to uh, continue leading us in worship as they sing um, Mary Did You Know. Thank you. That was inspiring. Well, uh, children two and under, uh, if uh, they're starting to get restless and so on, uh, the nursery is open on our lower level, and so uh, you're welcome to uh, bring your children down there uh, at any point. The rest of the children are going to remain in the service, and uh, we have activity sheets right over uh, in the corner there. And uh, you can grab a sheet and some crayons, I believe, um, 
and uh, if that helps you uh, as we uh, continue on in the worship. And um, at this time, I'd like to invite the New Life Korean Church and uh, welcome them as well uh, as uh, part of our worship service uh, today. And they're going to lead us uh, as well. Some of the members are going to lead us uh, in this next piece. At this time, we're going to have our uh, three-minute fellowship time. We'd like to welcome everyone uh, to this service, and uh, especially if you're a guest, uh, we, we want to invite you to uh, connect with us, and so you're free to uh, fill out a connect card as well. And uh, for those of you who are online, welcome also, we have a special welcome to you. And uh, we hope that you engage in some of the conversation online as well, wishing each other a Merry Christmas. Um, as you uh, sign in uh, to the account when you watch. And uh, yeah, uh, extend uh, a Merry Christmas uh, to one another during uh, this time 
and the peace of Christ. Merry Christmas. All right, everybody, please take your seats. Those three minutes, I only got this far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those three minutes go quickly. It's been said many times, but I'll say it again. Merry Christmas. I think I might, might be dying on me. Can you hear me? Awesome. Okay, cool. I'll say it again. Merry Christmas. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sean. I'm one of the pastors here at New Life Church. Uh, it's such a blessing to celebrate Christmas Day with you all here in this place. And, um, I, I was, as I was sitting here and listening to the choir, singing along and, and, and participating through every aspect of the service, and I just got a sense of just being overwhelmed. Um, not overwhelmed because there's so many people or overwhelmed with anxiety because I'm about to preach or anything like that, but it's, I'm just overwhelmed at the amount of blessing that we get to enjoy and live and experience in this place. I was overwhelmed with just the amount of blessing and the overwhelming sense of God's presence in this place. And I hope, I hope you get to experience that too this morning. 
that, that it's not just one of those traditional things that you come to church every Christmas day, sing a few songs, and watch some, you know, some people do their thing and go home and, and kind of unwrap your gifts or enjoy the gifts for the next couple weeks and then forget about Christmas. But no, I want, I want you to experience the living presence of God in this place and beyond this place in this Christmas day. And that is my desire for you. That is my hope for you. And, and we pr- I pray that, that God will continue to dwell in our midst uh, this morning um, as we worship, but as we also go from this place and celebrate this special day with our friends and family and with those people that we love. Um, songs, singing songs during Christmas is such a special thing, isn't it? I mean, choir is amazing. They sound amazing, do they not? Yes. Awesome. Christmas brings along so many songs, and there's, you know, there's, there's lots of songs. There's the carols, there's the hymns, there's the worship songs, there's the pop Christmas carols and songs. There's so many songs that lead up to Christmas that lift up our mood and bring the festivities all around us. It's a season where Michael Bublé comes out of a hibernation with it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Of course, we can't forget Mariah Carey, the undisputed queen of Christmas songs with her All I Want for Christmas is You. I mean, you would think that every year you hear that song. I mean, didn't, I mean don't you want anything more than just you? I mean, by now, it's been years that you've been wanting you. You could maybe ask for something else this year. Um, and of course, we also have to tip our hat to the ever-popular Last Christmas by the 80s pop duo Wham! Just only a few chuckles because I see, I notice the crowd, you know, it's, I see where the chuckles come from and I see where the chuckles do not. A generational difference. We are an intergenerational church here. We love, we love to worship together as, you know, different generations come together to worship because, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you don't know Wham or not. We can still come together and worship together, Okay. <laughs> Now, it's not one of my favorite songs, but as I was wrestling and, and, and thinking about the sermon on Christmas Day, one of the songs that kind of stood and caught my attention was the song, It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. We all know the song. You're probably singing it in your head but as soon as I mention the title. The song gives many reasons why Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. With the kids jingle belling and every, everyone telling you of, to be of good cheer, with those holiday greetings and cheerful happy meetings when friends come to call, parties for hosting, marshmallows for toasting, and caroling out in the snow, scary ghost stories and tales of glories of Christmases long, long ago. I don't know who still tells scary stories during Christmas. It's not my jam. If it is yours, have at it. Much mistletoeing and hearts with will be glowing when loved ones are near. These are all wonderful things. Yes, they, they bring excitement and, and a mood of festivity during Christmas. And I agree, that the song, I agree with the song that, that Christmas is indeed the most wonderful time of the year. And I would, I would assume that everyone in this room would agree that Christmas is indeed the most wonderful time of the year. But I don't agree with the reasons. Yes, they're good things. Don't get me wrong. I'm not anti those things. They're good things. They're, they're awesome things. They're so fun. But they, they kind of get old after a while, do they not? Because they chase after the wonderful feeling of Christmas. I'm not against these feelings. I like to feel wonderful during Christmas. To be honest, they fade after about a couple weeks, though if I'm being really honest with you. I mean, imagine kids jingle belling at the start of December and doing it all four weeks straight leading up to Christmas. I mean, you can have so much jingle belling, right? <laughs> but I don't know about you, but I want more than just the wonderful feeling of Christmas. I want what will move my heart. I don't want something that will lift up my mood. I want something, I need something that will move me on Christmas Day, that will move my heart. 
And I believe that reason is found in the unchanging, in the eternal truth that the light of the world has come, born as a little babe in Bethlehem. As you know, during Advent, we've been reflecting on various passages that talk about light in the book of Isaiah. By looking at various passages in Isaiah with the word light, we have looked at how these prophecies ultimately point to Jesus, the true light of Christmas. Today we'll be looking at three verses in Isaiah chapter 60 where the prophet Isaiah declares to God's people that the light has come. The light has come, amen. To the people living in exile, waiting for God's promise of salvation and restoration of Jerusalem to be fulfilled, Isaiah finally declares that their light has come. Let's read the passage together. I'm reading from the NIV, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Let's pray one more time. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you would move our hearts this morning with your word, with your truth, the everlasting and unchanging truth that the light of the world has come into this world and has shone on us and on the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, when the prophecy of Isaiah 60 came to the exiles living in Babylon, it was not a wonderful time. There was a political turmoil, and the people of God in exile have been waiting for a long time for God's promises to be fulfilled, wondering if God has perhaps forgotten about them, wondering if God has perhaps abandoned them. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, it was not a wonderful time either. In fact, the timing of Jesus' birth was definitely not the most wonderful time. As Mary, the mother of Jesus, had to give birth away from her home after traveling for at least four days on foot, only to stay the night in a dirty, stinky stable with livestock. As much as we'd like to imagine the Christmas story to be beautiful and amazing, it probably was far from it in reality. Listen to Martin Luther as he imagines the night of Jesus' birth. It's bad enough that a young bride married only a year could not have had her baby at Nazareth in her own house instead of making all that journey of three days when heavy with child. How much worse that when she arrived, there was no room for her. The inn was full. No one would release a room to this pregnant woman. The birth was more, even still more pitiable No one regarded this young wife bringing forth her firstborn in a strange place she had not the very least thing needful in childbirth. There she was, without preparation, no light, no fire, in the dead of night, in thick darkness. No one came to give the customary assistance. No one attended to this woman. And now think what she could use for swaddling clothes, some garment she could spare, perhaps her veil. There was no other, there was no one there to bathe the baby, no warm water, nor even cold one, no fire, no light. The mother was herself midwife and the maid. The cold manger was the bed and the bathtub. Who showed the poor girl what to do? She had never had a baby before. It must have gone straight to her heart that she was so abandoned. Now in this Christmas story, the true Christmas story, there are no kids jingle belling or people telling be of good cheer. There are no holiday greetings or happy meetings with friends. There are no parties for hosting or marshmallows for toasting. In the dark of the night, Jesus, the light of the world, was born in a a stable 
placed in a manger to a young couple who were lost and perhaps felt abandoned in darkness. And yet this very event is what makes Christmas the most wonderful time of the year. Even in the most darkest times, we can still celebrate and be filled with hope, joy, peace, and love at Christmas because of the unchanging <clears throat> and eternal reason, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the unchanging and eternal reason that Jesus, the light of the world, has come. What <clears throat> is wonder after all? It's a sense of astonishment or admiration. Jesus, the light of the world, coming as a babe, God taking on human flesh, a virgin conceiving a child in her womb by the Holy Spirit. If this is not a cause for astonishment, admiration for what God has done, to demonstrate his faithfulness in keeping his promise, and to demonstrate his love, what is? If this little babe, being the light of the world that will save the world from darkness, is not a cause for astonishment or admiration, then what is? <clears throat> People living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Jesus is the light who has come to proclaim good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. And the good news is that Jesus has done this. That he has done this. In the Gospel of Luke, there is a story when Jesus was in the synagogue and after he has read this passage from Isaiah, he sat down. And while everyone's eyes were fixed on him, he tells them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Mic drop. <coughs> Did you hear what Jesus said? This is fulfilled. This is done. He is the fulfillment of this prophecy. He has come and he has done it. Hallelujah. Christmas is the most wonderful time because the light of the world has come, yes, and has done all that was prophesied that will be done, saving the world from darkness and freeing all of humanity from the bondage brought, brought by sin and reconciling all of us back to God. So that we who were once called enemies of God could now be made children of God. Not only that, he defeated death so that those who live in him could face death with courage and, and, and not fear. Because all those who live in him will never die, Jesus says. And though they die, they will live again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as he was raised to life on the third day, the fact that the light has come means that all this has been done. And for that reason, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. Because we get to not only celebrate and remember that, but we also get to do it together in community with one another. In the presence of God. Now, yesterday we had a Christmas Eve service in the morning, and there was a lot happening yesterday. It was, it was amazing. It was, so, it was, it was awesome. And, uh, and the children's nativity scene, I mean, who knew the flamingos were present at, in, the, in the stable? <laughs> the Bible didn't tell me that. And Spider-Man, Batman, all showed up. Now... In the midst of all that was happening and, and the cuteness overload, what really moved me in yesterday's service was the line, Christ is the Lord. In the song, O Holy Night, Christ is the Lord. That is what makes Christmas the most wonderful time of the year. Because no matter how dark the world may be, 
no matter what our life circumstances may be, no matter what we may, might feel in the weeks leading up to Christmas, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is the Lord. He is sovereign. He rules and reigns in this world, no matter what we might think about the world. Even if he, mean, if, even if he seems like he's not working at all, he is reigning and ruling. Jesus Christ is the Lord. And that is worth celebrating and declaring over and over and over again every Christmas. And this is what moves us to adore and worship Christ on Christmas. Not only that, this light has made his followers, the church, light as well. Look how the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 60 begins. Arise and shine. For your light has come. Arise and shine. It's a command given to all God's people because their light, Yahweh, has come. And they can shine because God's light has come. He's with them. And as we can see, all the earth covered in darkness will flock to them as they shine, just like God has said in Isaiah chapter 49, 6, where God declares that he will make his people a light for the Gentiles that his salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. And Isaiah 60 is declaring that God has done that because he has come. In the same way, God's people, the church, you and I in this room, shine Christ's light. We are the light. Jesus said... You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Though the world may be still in darkness, it is not without hope because Christ, the light, has made his bride, the church, us, the light. He calls us to shine so that the world may see our good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. This is our calling. This is our calling as a church. Not only that we gather to stare and adore at the light, but also bearing and, and beholding and, and, and holding his light in us that we also shine in this world. This is our calling. Therefore, on this Christmas day, people of God, let us arise and shine. Let us arise and shine the light of Jesus to those in darkness. For our light, the Lord Jesus Christ, has come. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for coming to this world world that was needing, in need of you, this dark world that needed light, you have come, you have set foot in this world as the light of the world. And because of you, because of you, not only did the world behold light, the true light, but you have made us the light. And so God, we pray that as we come as we continue in worship, and as we continue to remember and celebrate this wonderful day of you coming into this world and you having come to this world, we pray that you would empower us and enable us to shine even more brighter as we look forward to the new year. All this we pray in Jesus' name.
Please remain standing for this benediction. People of God, the light of the world that shines in darkness has come. And this light has made you light for the world so that his salvation may reach the ends of the earth. So now arise and shine the light of God as you go from this place. May the Spirit of God empower you to shine the light of Christ ever brightly in this dark world. For the glory of his name and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.